Hi, this is Mark Pedersen, University Ombuds for Cal State University Channel Island with another edition of Channel Our Potential, where we ask the question, what does it mean to you to channel our potential at CSU Channel Island? My guest today will be Michael McGarry from Teaching and Learning Initiatives. He's the technical lead for the TLI within academic affairs and has a responsibility for helping coordinate various learning platforms across campus. Michael is a CSUCI grad as well as an employee and has worked uh, since 2007 with a break in between to get a uh, master's degree from CSU Fullerton. So he's a dual CSU uh, grad. So with no further ado, Michael McGarry. Not long after I got to Channel Islands, you know, I saw that the folks in TLI really are where it's happening. And, and even especially with COVID, it kind of went from a cottage industry uh, doing some really cool things on a, on a relatively small basis to boom. I mean, you all were all of a sudden the go-to on creating a whole new learning uh, methodology across campus. And so I thought maybe we'd start to kind of explore your role in sort of the center of that storm and, and how you help make some of those connections. Yeah, so I, I mean, that's a perfect, perfect analogy. I think we were definitely, um, you know, before the whole pandemic and the switch to fully virtual, um, you know, we had our, our core group of faculty and folks that we worked with pretty closely and regularly. But then all of a sudden you have this quick, just real quick kick into now the whole campus is teaching online. Now everybody needs this knowledge and know-how, right? You know, I think our whole team looked at it as an opportunity. Uh, and then I'm fortunate enough to work with some incredibly bright-minded people that really can take that kind of technical know-how and then put it into the pedagogical lens. And it really drives more of the, here's why you want to use all these things. That kind of melding of minds is what makes TLI so special in my mind. You know, there's, there's definitely folks that oh God, I got to do this on a computer now. This isn't what I want to do. And then we were able to gradually see the mind shift. And now it's become more, or even with some folks of that mindset, they're now kind of like, no, there's stuff in here that I'm going to keep doing just because like I can see benefits to it. And, and I think, you know, as you build that with some of the more resistant folks, um, you know, they're, they kind of, in a way, become your, almost your loudest champions. You get people that didn't even really want to use any of it from the get-go and then they find use in them that's when you really get folks to kind of come along and they they'll bring more to the table which has been really cool to see that shift what's the approach what are some of the questions you might ask as you're sitting down with some of these diverse groups of people um, in in helping figure out what to do so we have an arsenal of, you know, academic technologies and we could very easily just be like, here's our toolkit of things, go grab stuff, here's what we all do. Um, but we really try to focus on more, uh, start with a why as opposed to a how to. The main thing is what is the outcome that you want from your students? What is it that you're trying to achieve here? And we can work from there to figure out what the right either tool or set of tools, or it doesn't even have to be an actual specific one. It could just be a a single just kind of shift in thinking even um, and just applying it to a digital space. We want to figure out what folks want out of their students and then figure out how we can best facilitate it with the technologies and tools that we have. I love that. It's the starting with why and the issues or the concerns, whether small or large, that are trying to, the educators trying to address and you come in as a, as a partner to help we got some tools that might, or ways of thinking that might address right. that rather than, again, here's our solution, make yourself fit. Right, not exactly. We ultimately want to align with the goals of the folks that we're working with. Do you have any examples that come to mind that you could share on, on how you might have uh, used this, this mindset? We have folks that were doing video lectures and stuff like that from the get-go, but so this tool offered the ability to actually add uh, like in contextual kind of questions and activities as the video is playing right and then we had one of our nursing faculty um dr jamie hannon she kind of flipped it on its head and she's like this is great i want my students to make the videos and i want to add the feedback I was like okay that's yeah let's try to figure that out so we worked together and what it all, it was really cool because she was able to have her students record um, themselves doing like a procedure 
or something like that, upload the video. And then she, as the instructor, was able to give feedback on the timeline of the video at certain points. You know, usually it would just be overall comments where it'd be like, you did this at this point, you did this a little different. And then we had an instructor dream that up. And it was like, yeah, let's try to make something work. But it was kind of an example of the problem she was trying to solve was to have more interactive feedback remotely. Exactly. And, and, and you were not approaching like, well, no, I'm sorry, the tool is the other way around. You didn't, yeah. you're coming at it from, okay, the problem is X. Here's some ways that maybe we can use this tool like, you're, like, the, like the instructor was thinking right. to, make it, to right. make it more aligned with the, uh, the issues. That's, that's fantastic. Now, and it kind of raises other, another, other areas of, of thought, like you know, particularly again with COVID and some challenges with uh, equitable access to resources. The online learning space is actually kind of in itself has lended itself to um, kind of an equitable lens in the sense that, you know, there's in a face-to-face -face class, you a lot of times you have kind of like the select students that, you know, they're always first to raise their hands. They're always engaged in the conversations. Um, and then you have others that, you know, aren't, they're, they're not necessarily eager to jump up and, you know, share their voice or opinion. And with some of these kind of asynchronous online tools, we're able to see maybe a student is, you know, they're more comfortable um, communicating through written responses instead of, you know, raising their hand in the front of the class. Um, and we have a, a number of different tools that have kind of facilitated that conversation and it's giving a voice to um, students that may not necessarily speak up as much. There's definitely that aspect just to the online space in general. We're constantly having to think about are these practices equitable? Does this, you know, allow every student in this class, regardless of their situation or place, able to, part to participate equally? I would say we all have our own internal biases that we just kind of, you know, certain things don't come to mind, right? Um, and the, the group that I work with, fortunately, is, you know, we're, you know, we have different lines of thinking and different folks thinking in these different perspectives that keep all of us on the level, which has been really good. I like how you're one recognizing that there are inherent potential on in virtual environments to 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 adapt to more learning styles, but that you don't stop there. You're looking both to ask yourselves as a team regularly, how can we ensure that all different backgrounds are are having equal access? Sure. And that that's a powerful thing too to kind of be an iterative process, asking yourself that regularly. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because like in our space, I mean, we, we get excited about new stuff. And so, you know, we'll see something like, this is a great thing. And then it's like, you always have to take that step back. And it's like, but are there problems with it? Are there gaps in this that we're not seeing? I think it comes to this, the, the overall theme of connecting and problem solving across campus. Otherwise, you'd just be a sales team. You'd be selling these platforms, but you're not doing that. You're, you're connecting uh, issues and asking the tougher questions sometimes of who might be left out with this. Yeah. By no means are we trying to be like, yeah, we have these, you have to use them or you should be using them. <laughs> you know, they're, they're all brought on to solve different problems. And you really, I, I feel that we really have to start there um, as opposed to just like, like you said, we're not, we're not here to be salesmen or, you know, give you gimmicks just because we want to see usage stats go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's easy to get that narrow focus, but thinking on a broader focus, um, and not necessarily platform related, but more generally on connecting and problem solving. What's next? What's coming ahead? Do you see anything uh, coming for TLI or for your team more specifically uh, that is connecting, helping solve problems? It feels like we've been in this space of just like keep afloat <laughs> for so long. <laughs> we're, we're just starting to kind of get back to that, you know, kind of reevaluating, like you said, the iterative process is really looking at some of the stuff we've done, take some of the feedback we've gathered. <laughs> and now we're, we're finally getting to a point, I think, where we're able to take a closer look at some of the stuff we have been done, reflect on it. We wanna figure out what has stuck with our, our work, how we can make it better. How can we make it more accessible to more people? So I'm excited to see what comes <laughs> as we get to some level of normalcy coming back. But I like you, you're kind of underlying a connecting thing with that, because it would be tempting to say, Woo, we are done with, you know, COVID. Never done. And, well, done with COVID, hopefully. But <laughs> right, yeah, but I mean, as far as that crisis, 
you know, yeah. you're now obviously it's been traumatic and terrible in so many ways, but it's also been an opportunity for your team to kind of continue to look and now there'll be perhaps more time to, okay, what lessons did we learn now? What can we best practices, things that we can move forward or use in new ways? I think I sense behind the lines also you're saying that we can look at some of these tools that we've been using and new ones and see how can we continue to build on what we've learned. Yeah. Michael, we uh, always finish in Channel Our Potential with one key question, uh, a broad question. And so I'll ask the question of you. What does it mean to you to channel our potential at Channel Evans? I think the best thing that we can do to really you know, channel our potential, as you said, is continue to work collaboratively. You know, I, I work with the Teaching and Learning Innovations team, but there's a lot of collaboration behind the scenes across departments. And I think we need to keep that... Um, that culture moving forward, um, emphasizing, you know, to come at problems with an open-minded um, nature to them. So not quickly jumping to, nope, can't do that just because maybe just because something historically hasn't been done that way. If we've seen anything in the last year, it's that, you know, we need to be adaptable. <laughs> so I'd love to see, you know, I think we need to keep that in mind. I'll try to meet people where they are and come up with solutions together and collaboratively across the campus. Thank you. That's like a, a perfect summary of the whole idea of meeting people where they are, collaborating together and, and moving forward. Thank you very much.